Okay, good morning, Mr. Roger. Evening, my side. Yes. Uh, firstly, I would just like to say this is an honor for me to be doing this interview. Yeah, firstly, I'd like to just delve a little bit into the person, which is Roger Burnley. You've overcome some of the most difficult of challenges, and some of your work has literally become the acme in its respected field. You've produced a magnificent body of work despite having been diagnosed as ADHD, which most people would consider to be a vice. So people like yourself are changing the way society view our vices as possible virtues. So I'd just like to speak a bit about the challenges which you yourself have gone through. Maybe talk about one or two um, specific challenges. And could you speak to so the people who are going through adversities and challenges at the moment? Any advice that you might have for them? Well, okay, great. I'm so glad we're doing this because a lot of people are going through challenges right now because we all are. We're changing. And I, I want to speak on the moment because this is um, October 29th, right, of, of 2022 for me. That That's where we are. And so we have seen that the world is different. The world is changing and people are like confused and a little bit of afraid, afraid sometimes. And I'm saying, well, no, we don't have to be. And that sounds crazy. So this is a perfect lead in to talk about all the stuff that I have moved through in my life and why I wanted to bring my work forward now. Um, it was challenging. You talked about the ADHD. First of all, I didn't know I had it. I didn't know I had it until I turned 70 years old. And that was a shocking thing. But it was also um, revealing because it gave me a sense of, oh, I understand why I've been this way my entire life. Uh, people said to me, I can always, the thing I remember the most as a child was being told that I daydreamed all the time. And that was a bad thing. And I shouldn't be doing that. That's really what I got from it. Except I, because I did that, I was always creative. I could always get information and I was creating things. I mean, I created businesses. I created so many different things. And I didn't understand that why I was doing See, because I didn't read that much. I didn't study things. I just received information and just went with that. And it was difficult to explain that to anyone, even um, going through school. Because I didn't, you know, I, I graduated the top honors of my class from high school. I didn't study that much, but I, somehow I did that. And it was still confusing um, to me. And I started to get a sense of what was going on in our world. And I start, said, I have to start talking about it now. I published a couple of uh, several articles in the last week or so. And I called uh, the journey, I called them the journey of the reluctant mystic. That's the thing I didn't want to talk about. That's the thing I didn't want to say because it's like people are going to think this is really a little crazy. This is a little bit nuts. Except I was seeing all the results from this, this stuff that I had created and from my life. My my I know that every single person is born with something to offer the world, something that could make our world better and it's unique and it's innate. It's something that's within them. But a lot of times we don't trust that and or we judge it. And that's what I did for, for the longest time. And so now my mission is to have other people, no, <laughs> stop doing that. That's the problem in our world. We don't understand who we are. We don't understand what we have to offer. I can definitely see how, how that's become a part of your mission. Um, I've been following your work for quite some time, um, a few years. And I've seen a, a fair bit of the evolution that uh, your work's uh, gone through. Um, yeah, I can see why you, you might be weary of public opinion in your specific situation. You know, it's, it's very few people who reach such a climax in a, in a field. Mm -hmm. um, just just for, for some of the people who don't know, it's like anyone who's the best in their field, let's say an Elon Musk or someone, deciding to change field so i can see why why there's why there's that weariness of public opinion mm -hmm. so i've seen how you've gone from literally becoming one of the world's best vocal coaches to now helping people achieve their goals and dreams in a wider context mm -hmm. 
Um, so you refer to yourself now as an intuitive life coach. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to ask you, how have you developed such an acute sense of intuition? Because I understand intuition was a part of you becoming one of the world's best vocal coaches. How has that acute sense of intuition developed? And what is intuitive life coaching? It is, I can get a sense of a person's, um, their reason for being. I can get a sense of that. You you talked about the vocal coaching. Now, I had done many things in my life. I've had many other careers at many other jobs and vocations that I had done before I started to become a vocal coach, which I didn't do until I was 38 years old. I was turning, 30, thir turning 38 years old. That's how long, long it was. And then I didn't want to do it because I didn't have the skills. I didn't have the, the training, the musical skills that everyone else had. I, but my coach saw, he says, no, you need to do this. I had to be forced. He told me, quit your job. You've got to do this. And I said, okay. And I was terrified because I said, somebody's going to find out that I don't have any, any talent because I wasn't doing it the, the traditional way. You see, I didn't know music. I didn't know music. And that's a kind of, people think that's not even possible. And it was, but I knew people I could get it. I could look at someone and see where, I could feel where their blockages were. I could feel where, and I started to understand the physiology of the of, of the body and the voice. And I could kind of go, I started doing crazy things. I had this doctor, this ear, nose, and throat doctor that started referring patients to me who had these crazy conditions like spasmonic dysphonia, which I had never heard of before, but I was able to begin to cure people with, give them the cure or lead them there. And I, I could never explain that. So it was always, I'm hiding out because I didn't want people to know that i couldn't say that but it was all intuitive then i became known all over the world basically because of the program that i put out so it and so then it was challenging because i said i couldn't talk about the other stuff because people are going to think this guy is weird how what is he talking about and i had a lot of people leave me when i started talking about certain things i lost friends i lost people because they said we don't know where he's going and then people who um who had followed me as a vocal coach, and then I'm just talking about the world and other things, they're saying, that doesn't even make sense, except I knew that I had to change. Now, to say, how do you develop that? I coached hundreds of people over the years. You can't be with that many people without learning something about human development and about the restrictions that people put on themselves and their fears and their doubts. I, I saw all of them. And so I knew that I must have amassed something that was going to help, help people in some way. But then it got a little crazier. And I just want to go into this because I want people to understand where we are now. Because I resisted all of this. I've resisted it my, my entire life because we we didn't want we don't want to have the judgment from others. And I, you know, from a long time ago, from a time of a child, knowing these things, I didn't want to be judged, even by my family. I wouldn't tell them certain things, do you know? But now then it changed. And I said, I have to accept this and help because we're moving through a big change in our world. And we can all feel it. We know something's different and everyone's um, questioning what's been happening. And so in 2020, I kind of knew this. No one could understand what I was talking about. I kept saying, we're moving through a restructuring, as you might remember that that's what I called it. Um, I started meditating a, a couple of years before, but in 1988, I started doing automatic writing, which is meaning sitting down and just seeing what information you might receive. Now, at the same time, I was beginning my vocal coaching. So the two came together. So I'm receiving this information that because it started coming through and I'm just writing it down. And I think this is weird, but it was helping me. It helped me move through everything. I went through years of trauma and and disease and illness and I mean, things that people can't even imagine. And then I kind of got through it and I figured things out from the work that I had been receiving all of these years. But I wasn't going to tell people that's why, how I was doing it because they're going to judge me and think it's something weird. So then in 2021, I'm walking down the street and I hear, because I hear, I hear my communication, that's the intuition you asked about. We, we all hear ourselves. We don't always listen. We all have intuition. But because I've been doing this for so long and I had, this was part of my life path, 
it started coming through more. So I walk you down the street in 2021, and I hear very clearly, we gave you everything you needed to know in 2012. I, I, and it freaked me out again, just like when I first started receiving information in 1988. I said, that's not possible. I come back into my, my, my house, and I look at my computer, and I find a folder that was set aside on my computer that I'd never paid attention to, but just said Wilhelm, which is the name I write under. But I go, why is that there by itself? And then most of the messages were from 2012. I go, this is strange. Then I said, I had to test it. I had to figure it out. And you were one of the people that tested it. You were the one. The, this is why I did that, because I kept talking to you guys. And I said, I don't know. Just before we go any further, um, because this is kind of where, where we're going at the moment. Okay. Could you speak a little bit about channeling? And could you speak about Wilhelm? Okay, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, let me explain. I was always meditating. We, and people who do that will understand this. You, We want to get into this relaxed state so we can just let go of the cares of the day or whatever it might be. Now, if we are successful with that, we do hear information. We do hear, and I, from God, from source, from whatever, however, whatever way we think of that. But we don't always trust it. And I didn't. There were certain times, but I got, I had practice. See, because I had almost 10 years where I didn't let anybody see these. So I'm doing them every day. And I'm like, and again, my life is changing and I'm getting through absolutely everything. What happens when I go into my meditation, I will start to hear information. I would keep hearing something over and over again in my head. It would just seem like something was repeating and over. And I said, and I would start to put it together. And then I would get a sense, okay, right now. And then I would start to write. And then the information would just start to keep coming. And then I'd look at it and I go, oh, that made sense. Now, I wouldn't know necessarily at that time all of it, what it meant. But I knew that it made me feel good for that time, for that moment as I as I wrote it, you know. And But it was a definite sense of direction that I was receiving that wasn't from me. It was something, it was, it wasn't, I, sometimes I would write things and I would use words, words would come out that I didn't know what they meant. And I would have to look them up. And, there, and sometimes my guides would say, they would know, they'd say, okay, they have me write a word and they said, then they say, look it up. That's the, that was the direction that I would hear. And then when I would do that, it would make sense. Now to explain this to people was a little insane for me, but this is what would go on. And, and I, I finally decided I'm going to talk about it more. I wrote, published a book in 2019 where I kind of, about fear. So I kind of talked about it because it's what helped me move through all the fear that I'd had my entire life. Sometimes it would take me a long time. I would sit there forever. And there would be certain days I said, nothing's going to come through. It's just not, that's what I would think. I said, nothing's going to happen. Then after a, a long period of time, all of a sudden, then it was there. I've never had a day I've, in all these years where I did not receive the information. And I pretty much have done it every day since 1988. And then you, your skill gets better. Now I can, I, I before I used to have to write them all. Now I just get the information and I can just type it. Then I started channeling, doing it live um, in, in 2021 because I didn't want, I'd done it before that. I mean, I did it publicly. I didn't want people to see it before because it was it was challenging for me to understand that I was actually receiving information. And then when I would do a, chan a live channeling session, I don't hear it all as it's happening. I have to go back and listen later to see what actually came through and I, I know that's uh, that was just crazy for people to understand and they didn't but that's exactly what happened but what i was told was that i was given something in that year that could help us move through this transition in our world because that is what we're doing but it had to be with each person each individual that's why we did that's why i had you guys do the program because see i i doubted it and so in december that's when i had to put it together when I put the program out, I had people doing it. I didn't read the assignments that you guys were doing because I didn't want to doubt it. You know, I wanted to see. And so the first night that we had a follow, first day we had a follow up call, I, I decided, OK, I got to look at these and see what people have done. And I was freaked out because I'm seeing people changing and doing things and getting in touch with things so quickly that took me decades before I would even talk about or approach, you know, and I'm seeing them. Do, so it, so I stayed up half the night reading these things and going through it. So the next morning I was late showing up for the group, but I told them all why it happened. I wanted them to understand um, 
of what I saw, because it was just shocking to me that they had done so much in a short period of time. I'd like to go into depth about the about the programs in, mm-hmm. in a little bit. There's just a question I need to ask. Following your work, I've heard you say something along the lines of authenticity being the ultimate thing a person can strive for, can wish for. For myself, if I look at my life, if I reflect on my life, thanks, thanks to your program in, in large, in a very, very large part, mm-hmm. I see how inauthenticity leads to anxiety and other forms of psychological dissonance. Mm-hmm. Um, and therefore addiction, failed relationships, unhappiness in career, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And honestly speaking, I had great difficulty being authentic. I saw that I was pretending in many, many areas of yes. my life. Yes. Um, now you understand why I, I do this work. I want to ask, I want to, <laughs> so I just want to ask you, what does it mean to be authentic and how does your work help people like me who who struggle to be authentic? You become authentic when you stop judging yourself. It's, this is that's it, and it's a process. We come in. We all have plans we're supposed to follow. I can I know that every single person comes to this earth with a great plan and something they're meant to do, and it's authentic and it was given to them. It's it's innate. It's all those things. And I know that that's true, but we don't always follow it. I didn't. That's why I'm doing this work. And everything that you mentioned about that you just read about the problems <laughs> were all the ones I experienced because I wasn't being my authentic self. It's a cognitive process that we all have to move through to say, wait a minute, Maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. Maybe this is real. Then we start to move into it. That's why I I do my work. I tell people that we have to pace this out because you will only accept a certain amount at a time. That's just how we, as humans, that's how we operate. But everyone does have this place that they're meant to be. You will see that when you find that, all of a sudden you look at everything differently. And this is why I, I wanted more people to do this work. It would change. It would change our world. That sounded crazy to me to say that. However, when you start letting go of the doubts, the fears, the judgments that you had on yourself, you start to see the plan that was there for you. And then you start to embrace that. You don't need to fight with other people. You don't need to uh, have bad relationships. You don't need to stay at a job or a career that's not right for you. See, I did all those things for a long time, so I understand. I had to be forced out of certain things before I would move, even though I knew what it was. You found me because of the singing, right? But then I started to notice something else in you. And I just started, and that's what would happen. I would just start saying these things. That's what I'm talking about, the intuitive life purpose thing. I would just feel things when I'm working with the client, and I can also feel where you're holding back. I can feel where you're a little afraid of it or don't understand it. And I couldn't explain that to people in in, in, in real terms. I was just doing it, which I'd done for the longest time. What are the programs at the moment that you have published out there? Because you have this huge plethora of work that's been published online. Mm-hmm. Who, who will benefit? Who Who's the type of person who would benefit from engaging in your work? And what's the best way for them to, to engage? Perfect. Um, first of all, they can find all of it at my website at rogerburnley.com. And we have all the links there now where people can find everything. And so the best person who to engage in this work are people who want to be fulfilled and happy. And that sounds just insane. But it is exactly what I know. Because see, what this does and you've noticed this as you go through this. It's a it's a methodical method of removing your 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 doubts, your fears about yourself, all the things that you have your prior programming into limitation and your limited thinking. You know, we think that we did things wrong. We think that we were punished in some way because of the life experiences we've had. No. That wasn't it. You were given something that you were supposed to move through and then find the value in that so that you discover the value and worth of who you are. And so if more people did that, we would have a very different world. And I started to see this and I doubt it. I all, I've done this my entire life. When I put out something, I have to test it first. I have to know that it that it works. For instance, when you took my, uh, I think you took the singing program 
the first time. Uh, that's how you first came in. When I first put that program out, I put it out and I said, okay, this is great. And people were getting incredible results right away. But then there were questions. And I said, okay, I got to answer the questions. I don't like receiving these. I went back and I did another version. And then I still received a few. Oh, more questions. So then I went back and I redid it. And I did, I did a third one. Because I didn't want to have any questions. I wanted people to understand. I wanted people to know. And then no more questions. But then I knew I had to move from that because I had completed that. And I started sensing there's a greater calling in the world that I have to do now because I could feel that the world was changing. And that was, it started in 2016. That's when I kind of knew, oh, I got to start moving this. And everybody said, no, don't give up the, the, the coaching. Don't give up the vocal call. I said, I'm not going to give it up completely. But I knew that I had to move in this other direction. And that's the first thing I did in 2016 was I wrote an article. Um, I published that to start bring talking about this. I said, I might be slightly racist with misogynistic tendencies because I wanted to talk about the things that we each come, we're going to experience in our lives. We come into the world with different beliefs, ideas, and histories, ancestors, and all that, and we bring them to the world. So I said, we need to look at this and so we can all kind of deal with it so we can create something that's better. And then I was given specific direction that the way that I'm supposed to do that it, or make my contribution to the world is by having other people not go through all the crap I did and give them this work and have them understand who they are because then we don't have people going around hating one another, doing crazy things. Where do you find the courage to publish articles like this about things that most people are afraid to speak about about i don't <laughs> <laughs> that's the other part which people don't understand the courage no i'm so introverted and i i would if i had a choice i would not publish anything because i i just because it's uncomfortable i don't want people to looking at me i don't want i didn't want the attention that's why i called that's why i said i was the reluctant mystic i said no i, I didn't want it and so um whether it was the fear of of the judgment or whatever it might have been but the other part of it is we all have um different parts of our personalities everybody is introverted and extroverted we have elements of that we all do it's just different balances and um some of us are a little more introverted. I'm more introverted. When I'm when I'm doing my work, when you put me on a stage or put me in front of a client or anything else, no, I can be very extroverted and give you all the information. But otherwise, I would stay hidden in my home and not talk about anything because that was the that's what I was a hermit. But when when I knew what was happening and, and it was clear to me that I had something that can make a difference in the world, I said, no, you can't do this anymore. You can't, you can no longer hide. That's because that was I what I was doing. It's not, and I I will I want to talk about say this for anybody else who might be um, getting this or feeling something that they're doubting. I doubted it for years. I want you to understand, and I hid it and I wrote about it. I can take you back messages over decades. Stop hiding yourself. Stop running from what you know. Stop always. And so now I can sense that with other people. And I know it's something that would help them live their best lives if they could move beyond that. Some people give up because they don't, aren't willing to take the time to work with their minds. Because that's all it is. It's just our minds and what we're thinking. I believe every person is, we're all born equal. We all have the same abilities and talents. They're, I don't see anybody better than another. It's just, are we willing to find the best that's within us. The program that you released has undergone a name change. Okay, when we first released it in December of 21, I called it Four Weeks to Your Best Life. And I only did that because I was testing. I wanted to know if it worked. That's why I put you guys in there. That's why I did the whole entire thing. I wanted to see. And then when I started receiving the results, I go, oh yeah, <laughs> it does. So then, few months ago, I changed the name to Your Last Development Program because I figured out why would I need anything else? Well, first of all, I wouldn't do anything else. And why, and I couldn't figure out why anyone else would need other work because all we ever do is ask ourselves questions, get information, and decide what we're going to believe and accept based on what is right for our life path. 
And so for whatever reason, I was able to put together these questions and these ideas that stimulate the individual to find that answer for themselves. It's a guide to self-actualization because that's what we want. We want to know who we are. We want to love ourselves. We want to live the lives that we see that, that, that are prosperous and happy and successful. And everyone has the ability to do that when we start to work with our minds. I can definitely attest to even the name. To me, it's a program that I can definitely see myself working through my entire life. The entirety of the program, or I can call it an experience, right. I think an experience may be more apt of a word in certain senses. It's an experience I, I can definitely see myself repeating throughout my life because it really does take being in a certain space with certain you know what they call shadows and things right. into coming into a more authentic space and as right. you said that's a program and if I'm being honest with myself I can definitely see myself being in this authenticity process doing this program repeatedly you're, yeah you're, there are several people now who have started over again <laughs> they, they realized that and they just they went back and they started doing it alan just sent me something uh today and then he oh then he said it sent another one and he said you know i started back again but then and then he looked he goes wow i didn't even appreciate what how much i had done before that's the other problem that we have and so just that and then uh this other person joseph he's he's like halfway through it again on the second time and and he gave me the best reason for doing that he said in the beginning i was skeptical and so he says i started to become more optimistic i was going you know when you first joined the program he says i was skeptical but then he said now i get it and i'm i'm just more optimistic and everything has changed so he says i still got stuff to do so he started over again and i got like six days the other day <laughs> that he did, did all in one time which was cool yeah i think the reason people repeat the course i would say is because we're all constantly changing and evolving and this experience is such a great way to delve into yourself. When I finally started to understand what I had, um, I started receiving this other information. This is that mystic side. Why do I know this stuff? Or why was it coming through? I was told that we were going to be going through an evolutionary change and it was going to be challenging. And the reason it was going to be challenging is because people were going to be afraid. And all of our old ideas were going to come up. And we're going to want to be right. And we're going to fight with other people. There's going to be a lot of different things going on. We're going to have, we might have a war. All of these things, I was told, and then I saw them start beginning to happen. And then I started to feel guilty. I absolutely, I started to, I said, oh, because I didn't understand. I didn't trust what I had. Like a lot of us don't, <laughs> you know, what we have. And it's a process. So then when I started seeing it, I said, okay, I got to change things. I've got to do more. The day before, two days before I started talking about things, I said, nobody's looking at what's happening. And I posted something like, then I said, uh, I'm going to say all the quiet parts out loud because people are saying, wait a minute, something's going on and I don't completely understand. Why are people angry? Why is there so much tension? And there's an energy that we don't completely understand. And some people just want to hide. They just don't even look at anything that's going on in the world because it's so stressful. And I said, oh, but if you understood that it's for you, that it's for you to start to understand who you are, you're just being motivated to realize what you came to bring to the world and do that. And then our world would be better. And that sounded insane, except I know that it's true. <laughs> you know, if you think about it logically. In your intuitive sense, why are people born with the dreams that they have? And why is it important for a person to actualize their dreams because we're all part of source and the only way we can create a world that continually evolves is is if we are willing to become our authentic selves which means it's something that was god given something that was implanted in us at birth that we're meant to bring forth and it could make our world better but if we go around for decades eons <laughs> centuries of not doing that we then have a world that looks very chaotic and 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 disempowered let's say because people don't know who they are 
we do move through these changes in our world. We've done it before. We're just going through something a little bit different now. And so not everyone's going to have the same ideas. And that's what we have to get. No, we're not going to have the same ideas and beliefs. We have to work with the ones that we were given and they, they're in it. We feel those. And so when we deny them, that's the f- listening to your intuition. That's the thing that's so difficult for us. It was ch- challenging for me because I've got so much of it coming through. But then I had to fight through my being an introvert, not wanting to be out there, and also that fear of judgment. What are people going to think? But also knowing, and which became much um, bigger for me, that I said, no, I got to do more. Yesterday, we had, um, here in the U.S., we had a crazy thing happen in our government. And and I was given all this information. The United States would have some changes that they would be moving through. And then we started to see it. And it turned into violence. And that was the thing. And I said, no, we don't have to have that. If we understand, if more people know what's going on, we don't have to have violence. We don't have to kill one another. We don't have to have wars. But if we're holding back who we are who we are, and what we came to bring to the world, energetically, the world goes crazy. Everything in the world is energy. We're creating everything through energy. If we're hating, we're putting in a lower vibration. If we're loving ourselves and doing something productive and what we came to do, we're putting in light. That's how things change. That's how we create anything in our lives or in the world. Most individuals don't see themselves having such a global influence. You talk about stepping into your own authenticity, having an if such a global effect. You use words such as, we don't need violence, we don't need wars. Mm-hmm. I'm understanding that stepping into one's own authenticity is a lot more i would say important than what one perceives then right you speak about that yes and most people won't understand that and i get that and so they don't have to they don't have to understand that they don't even have to make that connection to the world they just have to make that connection to their lives that's all and my because i let's listen they won't believe all of that i don't care what i do care about is that you're happy and that you're successful and that you're loving yourself and that you're 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 prospering because that's a different energy that's the energy of light and that's going to permeate the world and so yes i want you to be selfish see <laughs> cuz if you're sel- a little bit selfish which many of us are not willing to do because we've discounted who we are so how could we feel that we deserve something but now is the time to move through that and decide to give yourselves the love that you should have Give yourself that right career. This is why I love guiding people through that. I would tell you things. I remember when you were living in, uh, you were in Brazil when you were when you were staying in Brazil, and I was right. and I started telling you different things what I would see, and I, I don't know when that's going to happen. It just comes out at times, you know. So, um, but anyway, that's where where I'm, what I'm feeling now. This is why I had I just decided that I'm going to make changes in the program because I got to put more of it out. I have so much content, and so I had said, okay, I'm changing things by uh, November first because I not put everything in and all of that. So um, I just know what is there and what can be done if we keep going. It's incremental how we develop, you know, individually and the world. I always need to know, because we all doubt ourselves. And I want everybody to say that. Most, most of my information is like getting you to move beyond your fear and doubt. And so when people would do the program, this is why last, you know, last December, I said, oh, now more of my doubt has gone. You said something right after. I don't even know if you remember. Authenticity is a key word. It, it really helped me discover more of my own authenticity. And that's something that's a lot more powerful and important that pe- than people may accredit. Exactly. So my overall impression was just this extremely rich delving experience into myself, who I am as a person going into my past memories, seeing what these past memories and events meant to my life, making sense of my past mm-hmm. and my present moment through 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 this uh, reflection experience there's a few key words that i can mention which you've already m- mentioned and i think a person needs to go through the the experience themselves to see why these words are so relevant so the words like empowerment mm-hmm. authenticity self-knowledge 
self-discovery. Each person is going to have their own experience. The reason I had the writing, because I have to come from what I've done. You know, I have to coach from what I've done. And so um, I had a morning, morning routine starting from 1988, where I didn't do anything before I sat down in the morning and wrote. It didn't matter what kind of night I had or day before or whatever it was. If I sat down and got myself into meditation and got, and then I would start to write, I would get this information and it would, you know, oh, wow, that's better now. And it would change. I would change. And this is how I created everything. And I did it every single day. So I knew the value of being with yourself. And I wanted, and I would start to develop this intimate relationship with me. And that's why I wanted people to do the writing and to get in and figure out who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? Because everybody has it. And it's a valuable one when you find it. And then that has you take off. People say, well, why would you want to do this? Because then you're going to live the life that you wanted to have. You're going to have the right relationships. You're going to have the right job. You're going to have all the money you want because you're going to love what you're doing because it's aligned with who you are trying to do all these other things because people told you this is what you should do rather than following what is within you, what is that intuition or what is innate or built into you, ingrained, whatever. Every single person has it, but we might judge it. I, I hope that a lot of people have the opportunity to, to engage with this course, to go through this experience, because we've all been through crisis situations or very uncomfortable situations. And as you said, that's not necessary. Mm -hmm. And that's really profound. A lot yeah. of these things, you could argue, yes, it is necessary for spiritual development. If you've really gone through very uncomfortable situations, you do know that there are other ways right in which one can learn the lesson that one learns so yeah i hope that people can engage with this course to avoid all these unnecessary yes. situations that we have to go through and to get that you know accelerated growth and expansion that that this type of course has to offer so i just want to ask are there any final words which you could say which you would say? I would just say I I want everyone to understand because um, we're going to have more uncomfortable times in the, in the coming days in our world. And I just need people to understand it's for good. That sounds crazy because we're looking at something that looks terrible. However, if more people decide to find what is good within them and why they're here, that changes everything. And I and all I'm saying is that whoever comes with me, that's what they're going to discover. And that's the work that I have. It took me a, all of these years to finally come here, which is again why I said this is the last development program. But now I have something that I can leave with the world that I know is going to make a huge difference. And that's going to be my legacy. That's what I'm saying, because I've I've seen the value of it and I know what it can do. And and I, but I know what every single person has within them once they're willing to do the work and find it. That's all. Can you just remind people where they can access this course um, and, these, and the rest of your body of work? Yeah, the, the, the best, because we're changing things, but the best is to go to rogerburnley.com and then you can find all the links are there. Awesome. Thank you so much for that interview. Once again, that was, this was an honor for me. As Thank you.